The purpose of the following simulation was to create a scenario with injuries and evaluate the effectiveness of the response of the wildland firefighters, aviation resources, IMT personnel, and to test the EMS coordination and readiness. Simulations that resemble operational practices and tempos permit personnel to develop and apply skills, teamwork, and critical decision making in a controlled environment. Fox Trainee, Park Creek Campground, SAW Team on command. Park Creek, SAW Team, Fox Cross Trainee command. Yeah, Corey, I've had uh, a, a buddy get hit over here. He's on the ground, man. A snag hit him hard. I need you guys' help. Okay, I copy you. We'll get some radio reports head. That way you are at Park Creek Campground. That's correct, man. All right. Sure, if you copy that on uh, command, uh, sounds like we may have a medical emergency at Park Creek Campground. I'm going to be heading that way and getting some of my resources out of that way as well. I'll contact you when we arrive. Uh, Park Creek, uh, sounds like we have an unconscious victim. Um, at this time, I'd like to get the uh, uh, ground transport ambulance to come in this direction. And that's uh, our ILM team. We'll get the 9 line going for you. I copy unconscious victim, we like ground transportation, confirming this is up the 582 Road Park Creek Campground, is that correct? Affirmative, 582 Road Park Creek Campground. Medical unit copies, break, Medic 7, Medic 7, Med Unit Leader on command. Go ahead, Med Unit Leader. So you're going to be responding to an unconscious male hit by a snag in the Park Creek Campground on Division Foxtrot up the 582 Road. Show Medic 7 in route to Park Creek Campground on the 582 Road, Division Foxtrot. Uh, we have a medical over in the uh, Park Creek, you know, campground. Pioneer Communications, Foxtrot, Trainee, LEO, Command 3. I've arrived in Park Creek Campground. Uh, engine resources and medics have arrived too. We'll get back with you here shortly on an update. Okay, danger of injury. Um, Park Creek Campground, 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 Park information on the patient, uh, don't have an age, 30-year-old uh, male, roughly, uh, in stable condition, unconscious. Um, the paramedic at this time is going to intubate, break. Uh, this is urgent, red. Uh, we'd like to keep that ambulance headed this direction, break. Frequency for this incident is going to be LEO 3. Thanks. Box route training. Air attack. Medical unit leader on LA command. Medical unit leader. Air attack. Hey, Mike, when able. Yes, for air ops, we'd like you to... Communications, we'd like you to come up on the command frequency with some vitals. If you are, air attack, one night picture. Snag, obvious head injury. Um, patient is backboarded. He is, uh, we're assisting respirations. We've got an IV started. Last set of vitals, BP 144 over 110. Pulse 114. 
respirations assisted at 12. GCS of 3. Pupils are reactive but unequal. And nose, ears, throat are clear. Lungs equal. Medic 7 is blocked by a landslide on road 582. Break. Division Foxtrot, your ground ambulance will not be able to make it to you. Stand by, we will be looking for air extraction. We'll be contacting Hellbase. A Foxtrot training copies. Okay, I just, I just got a call that the ambulance is blocked by a landslide, so we're going to be looking at medical evacuation via aircraft. Okay. Um, as far as LZs around here, they're pretty limited, so we need to, we do have that short haul aircraft down at Hell Base. We need to look at a spot. So, if you got him stabilized enough to the point where we can go around and look at something that might be viable, we can take a little walk around and look. Just support. We'll continue to do IVs. Are you going to find the uh, spot? Vitals. And apparently the ambulance isn't going to be here, so we're going to do a short haul. Okay. So let's just support him here till we decide where we're going to go. Okay. We have had a change in plans. Ground transportation has been blocked by a landslide on the 582 road. We are going to need aerial extraction. We're going to need 00, zero Bravo to uh, come up on it. If you could handle that for possible air extraction from Division Fox Truck. I'm going to do that next. That's affirmative. And also, we're going to have a medevac ship coming in from St. Al's out of Boise. Uh, we're going to have them come up on 155280, direct them as you see fit. Um, so, you know, this is a pretty good opening here as far as, you know, the size. If you could walk around and look at some of the other campsites and maybe see if you can identify something else like this. Um, just kind of spread that, spread that out. And if you got another body that can look at that as well, that would be great. And not at this time, uh, we're just trying to identify uh, a good spot where we can short haul from uh, close to this area. I kind of got one spot in the campground I'm looking at. I got some other resources out looking for some other decent sized openings. Uh, other than that, if you could take a look around. Yeah, we will do. And if you have coordinates of anything you're looking at, I can relay as well. We'll keep our eyes open. I'll get back with you.
Realistic training can prepare personnel to respond to unforeseen events. It prepares them to act appropriately when an unpredicted situation arises. Full-scale simulations involve some degree of risk. However, the reward is increased value of lessons learned from this type of training. Experience is the best way to develop the skills that are essential for effective decision making. Consider incorporating the following actions when preparing and conducting a simulation. Establish a simulation coordinator who's responsible for oversight of the simulation. Depending on complexity, the coordinator may employ observer controllers to monitor the scenario. Conduct briefings with leadership, cooperators, and personnel involved. Create the scenario. Consider training opportunities for personnel involved with the scenario. Implement hazard controls. Conduct AARs and evaluate the exercise. As always, firefighter and public safety should be the highest priority of any scenario planning process.